For the first time ever, Pokemon is stepping away from the usual top-down view with linear progress in favor of an open-world setting. Pokemon Legends Arceus intends on revamping the series with new gameplay, story, and timeline. I'm Camille Salzar Hadaway, and today we will go over the entire story of Pokemon Legends Arceus. If you haven't completed the game yet and would like to avoid spoilers, save this video for later. Otherwise, be ready for a trip through time and space. The story of Pokemon Legends Arceus happens long before the events of any previous game. We are transported back in time by Arceus, a godlike Pokemon who is said to have shaped all there is in this world. We wake up in the Hisui region, which is the land that became known as Sinnoh in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. We open our eyes and we see Rowlet, Cyndaquil, and Oshawott staring at us. Behind them stands Professor Laventon, who wears quite a fancy hat. He tells us that we fell out of a mysterious space-time rift in the sky, above Mount Coronet, the highest mountain in the region. Professor Laventon is working for the Galaxy Expedition team and needs our help to create the first ever Pokedex. The three Pokemon run away and we have to help Professor Laventon catch them. As we chase after the runaway Pokemon, we find a modified version of our phone laying on the ground. A message pops up on the screen telling us that the device is called an Arc Phone and that our mission is to seek out all Pokemon. We then discover the main town of the game, Jubilee Life Village. There we meet either Ray or Akari, depending on if we play as a male or a female Pokemon trainer. If you've played Pokemon Diamond or Pearl, you may recognize that Jubilee Life Village is an earlier version of what would become Jubilee Life City several years later. The inhabitants of Jubilee Life Village do not yet live in peace with Pokemon, which are considered dangerous creatures. Our ability to catch the runaway Pokemon doesn't go unnoticed, and we get an offer to apply for a place in the Galaxy Team Survey Corps. The goal of this organization is to explore the Hisui region and discover its Pokemon. As we are a homeless stranger that fell from the sky, we need a place to stay for the night. The Galaxy team lends us some quarters so we could get some rest before the Survey Corps' entry trial. At the Galaxy team headquarters, Captain Selene tasks us to venture into the Obsidian Fieldlands to catch three different Pokemon. No one in the Galaxy team ever managed to catch three Pokemon in a row. But this is no sweat for us, as we are a Pokemon trainer from the future. And now comes the most important choice of the game, the starter Pokemon selection. We have the choice between one of the three runaways we met at the beginning of our adventure, Rowlet, Cyndaquil, or Oshawott. Volo, a merchant from the Jinko Guild, challenges us to our first Pokemon battle. Our starter Pokemon defeats his Togepi and levels up for the first time. We resume our task of catching the three Pokemon for Captain Selene. Of course, we manage to complete the Galaxy Team's entry trial. Selene gives us an official uniform of the Survey Corps, and we become a member of this organization. To complete the Pokedex, Professor Laventon tells us we need to complete various research tasks. These missions range from catching a specific number of Pokemon to evolving them or finding different forms of the same Pokemon. We climb up the ranks in the Survey Corps and Selene eventually tasks us with a harder mission. Some Pokemon are in a frenzy and we need to stop them. Lightning struck down from the same space-time rift we fell out of and is causing the five noble Pokemon of Hisui to go crazy and attack people. We have to travel across the region to quell each of these noble Pokemon. They are overseen by a warden belonging to one of Hisui's two clans, the Diamond Clan led by Adaman and the Pearl Clan led by Irida. Both these clans worship the almighty Sinnoh, but they disagree on whether this deity represents time or space. As we finally defeat the fifth noble Pokemon, the space-time rift in the sky expands even further and the sky above Hisui turns red. As we fell through the very same space-time rift, Galaxy Team Commander Kamado believes we still are connected to the noble Pokemon frenzies. He doesn't really know what or who we are anymore. 
Commando decides to banish us from Jubilee Life Village and from the Galaxy Team until we could prove our innocence. What a jerk. The merchant we defeated at the beginning of the game, Volo, takes us to the Ginkgo Guild's secret settlement called the Ancient Retreat. There, Kogita tells us that an artifact called the Red Chain could make the rift disappear and bind the world back together. However, this artifact is not already lying somewhere, and we need to craft it. To do so, we need to find materials protected by the three guardians of Husui's lake. The legendary lake trio is composed of Yuxi, Mezpri, and Azelf. Adaman and Irida, the leaders of the Diamond and Pearl clans, want to help us. However, they can't risk Commander Kamado finding out that they go behind his back. Only one of them can help us without Kamado figuring out their plans, and it's up to us to decide if we go with the Diamond or Pearl Clan. Our Arc Phone grants us access to the hideouts of the Legendary Lake Trio. Not only do we have to fight powerful Pokemon, but we also need to answer a series of questions to pass the Lake Trials and get the materials required to bind the world back together. We head back to Jubilee Life Village with the red chain, with the hope of fixing that red sky above our heads. But Kamado is already gone, leading the Galaxy Team Security Corps to the Temple of Sinnoh atop Mount Coronet to deal with the Pokemon they saw on the other side of the space-time rift. We climb the mountain to catch up with them and defeat Kamado to make him realize we're not the bad guys here. Duh. Depending on whether we went after the Red Chain materials with the Diamond or Pearl Clan, the legendary Pokemon atop of Mount Coronet appears to be either Dialga or Palkia. We try to use the Red Chain to fix the world, but the artifact is broken to pieces, leaving us to face a mighty legendary Pokemon. As we are the very best, like no one ever was, we manage to catch the Pokemon. However, the second legendary Pokemon appears as well, forcing everyone to run for their lives. Professor Laventon uses fragments of the red chain and a sample of the origin ore to create a special kind of Pokeball called the Origin Ball. We take this Pokeball and head back to the Temple of Sinnoh to catch the second legendary Pokemon. But as we meet it, the Pokemon transforms into its origin form, changing its appearance and statistics. This transformation causes the destruction of the Temple of Sinnoh. Of course, we manage to defeat and catch this legendary Pokemon. Using the Origin Ball causes the space-time rift to disappear, and the sky turns back to normal. As they witness the appearance of both Dialga and Palkia, the Diamond and Pearl clans realize neither of them was worshipping a false deity and set aside their differences. All is well and ends well, and the credits roll but the game isn't really over yet. After a party to celebrate the fact that we saved the world, our arc phone is beeping. It reminds us that we need to seek out all Pokemon. Professor Laventon also needs to complete his Pokedex, so we go back on the field. As we are about to leave to find all the remaining Pokemon, Volo tells us he's an expert in the legends surrounding Pokemon and could teach us a thing or two about the mysteries of Hisui. He asks us to collect plates, special items that are scattered across his suite. We venture through the region to collect them all from noble and legendary Pokemon. Once we collect 17 of the 18 plates, Volo tells us the story of Giratina, a legendary Pokemon as powerful as Dialga and Palkia that was banished to another world due to its violence. Volo takes us to the ruins of the Temple of Sinnoh and reveals he was the one who caused the rift to appear by seeking out Giratina. He hoped that Dialga and Palakia's appearance would make Arceus show up. He holds the last plate we couldn't find and wants us to hand over the 17 we collected so he could summon Arceus himself. He wants to use the almighty Pokemon's power to create a brand new world, destroying his suite in the process. We can't let him do that and face Volo in battle. He is one of the most powerful adversaries we had to face so far, but Volo is no threat to us after we call all those legendary Pokemon. But 
we are not the only ones with powerful friends. Giratina appears near Volo, confronts us, and transforms into its origin form. After we defeat Giratina, Volo hands us the last plate. The flute we use to summon Weirdir and Romaran Hisui transforms into Azor Flute, a special item that grants access to the Hall of Origin where Arceus resides. Volo is pretty angry that Arceus chose us instead of him and swears that one day he will conquer Arceus and create a new world, even if it will take him centuries to do so. After these events, we get back to running across his suite to catch all Pokemon. Once our Pokedex is complete, we can return to the Temple of Sinnoh and play the Azure Flute. We land in the Hall of Origin where Arceus challenges us. The strongest Pokemon of them all is no sweat for us and we defeat it. He gives us a fragment of itself and grants the legend plate, allowing the mythical Pokemon to change its type mid-battle. We head back to the village where the whole Galaxy team gathers to celebrate the Pokedex's completion. Celine, the Survey Corps captain, gives us a shiny charm to increase our chances of encountering shiny Pokemon. And that's it! Thank you for watching this video! Which Pokemon is your favorite? Let us know in the comments below! Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the leaderboard for more gaming stories every week!